Well, thank you, thank you, Christian. As he has already said, I am going to speak about Europe achievements during the last two years. But before that, I would like to, to say you some words why we are here, why agroforestry is so, so uh, important. We will follow the presentation with the, some ideas about the CAP and agroforestry promotion, which are the main, how the Europe objectives, tools, and media fulfill this uh, agroforestry promotion from a policy point of view. And finally, we will show you some agroforestry uh, needs. Well, Regarding the, the, the first part, why agroforestry is promoted nowadays for most important global policies? Well, this is because Europe, as well as the, um, the, the whole world working with, uh, with agriculture, has, has a very big goal, which is increase food production in a sustainable way. That, that is to say, fo follow the main FAO uh, sustainability pillars. The two first ones are dealing directly with those, in, those do, two important aspects, which are the improvement of the efficiency in the use of the resources, which is the, in the identified with uh, eco-intensification. The eco-intensification is not given because we put more inputs, but because we are, we, we do, uh, agroforestry does better, better use of the resources. Therefore, it's considered by many uh, important and global policies that agroforestry is one of the best tools to eco-intensificate just at two levels, at below ground and above ground level. Let me show you this with an example. This is the, our most important system of agroforestry in Europe, the Vegesa. I hope you know him, it, it, if not, just go to, Mont to, to Portugal on, or, or to Spain. Well, we, uh, just imagine that this land has no trees, okay? So the, the percentage of radiation that is captured by the system will be much lower than if we have trees because we, with the trees we increase the uh, biomass photosynthetically active to uh, capture more radiation. I think this was very beautiful shown by a, a, a work uh, done by our hoster, uh, Christian, with these uh, figures where you have three, the, the three scenarios. The first one is agriculture, the second one is agroforestry, and the third one is forestry. We represent there the percentage of radiation that is captured by every type of land. With the first one, we have the crop is red, around 30% of the radiation that reaches this piece of land is captured by the, by the crop. If we go to the, to the, to the, to the forestry uh, part, we see that almost a 50% of radiation is captured. But when we have agroforestry, we have more radiation capture, so we do really do eco-intensification. This is translated in an increase of biomass production per unit of land, which is around 40% or between, with a range between 20 or 80%. Of course, agroforestry also delivers ecosystem services like biodiversity. We can see there that below the trees there are some species that are adapted to this microhabitat created by the tree than far away of, uh, of, of the tree. Well, but agroforestry is also able to increase eco-intensification or the op optimize the use of the resources from a below ground level. One of the most important actions that uh, an agroforester or a, 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 a farmer has to do is fertilization. We add an, a nutrient. We expect the, the, this nutrient is taken up, obtaken by the, by the crop. But unfortunately, part of it is leached, causing, causing uh, contamination of, of rivers, as all you know. Just let, let's put there a tree with the roots. And part of this nutrient that has been leached, is a, 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 the tree is able to uptake, uh, uptake them. But it's also important to, to see that there are different layers that the, the tree is able to get, uh, to put their roots uh, in deeper layers than the crop. And the roots are the main source of carbon of these systems. So we are able to capture ma ma a higher amount of, of, of carbon. Well, let's see that in practice. We, uh, together with uh, P.K. Nair, Bimala Nair, David Hollett, and Gerardo Moreno did an experiment, uh, it's an experiment in the, the GESA, and then you can see which is the amount of carbon that is storage below the tree than far away from the tree. From the tree. It's uh, around 15 meters from the tree. 
Well, you see that the amount of carbon sequestered in the soil in a, in a, in a meter Thank you. In a meter of depth is double if we are below the tree than we are far away of the tree. This is one of the main reasons why UF, uh, URAF has supported the initiative 4 per thousand launched in the COP21. As, and as uh, Alan Canet, our previous speaker, says, because our forestry is one of the easiest activities to improve soil carbon in ecosystems at long term. But agroforestry also delivers ecosystem resilience, like, for example, to drought resilience. You can, we can see that here in the Dehesa, we have some good pasture below the tree, but it's dry. Uh, it's that we have no good pasture far away from the, uh, from the tree. This means that we are able to extend the grazing season and have animals we, if we have trees. If we don't have trees, that is not possible. But also because traditionally, and even nowadays in some parts of the world, we are able to use, with, to overcome these drought periods, the branches of, of, of the trees. Of course, it, the, tree, the presence of trees increases the flooding resilience of the system, reducing the uh, risk of, of erosion. Well, our forestry can be seen as a good tool that it provides many benefits, but what about how was, was agroforestry promoted in the past? Well, I think Christian already says no, but I am just uh, going to, to, to show this. In the 50s of the last uh, century, there were apply, implemented some modern techniques, land consolidation, agricultural intensification, mechanization, etc., that makes that agroforestry was not promoted because the, pre, the, the goody vegetation was taken out, out of, the, of, the, of, the, of the plot. So, not. Well, when there was a switch, a switch between uh, the copal payments to the, the copal payments there, the, the, in Europe, we have an, uh, the, appears a word, which is land eligibility, which means that your land has to be eligible if you uh, want to get a payment. And the criteria to get this eligibility was based on the number of trees. So we have 50 trees per hectare, which destroyed millions of trees all, all over uh, Europe, so it was not promoted. Well, what about what about what, what we have now? Well, land eligibility is, is still there. It was uh, increased to 100 trees per hectare, but there still there are some problems. Like for example, the lack of coherence between pillar one and pillar two. If we select the measure two to two, or when we want to to mostly in the south part of Europe where uh, the good vegetation is very important to feed animals, if the member states doesn't establish, uh, activate the rule of the established local practices, then they, can, they cannot be selected. So if they, are, they will not be eligible and they will, the, the farmer will not get paid from it. So we improve, but it's not complete. Well, just having this scenario that I, I have already drafted, uh, let's see. What are the main objectives of, of URAF? Well, promote the establishment of, of adequate policies, spread agroforestry knowledge, contribute to agroforestry dissemination, and enhance agroforestry adoption. We can just summarize this in two main aspects. We want to overcome lack of adequate policies to promote tax forward, and to reduce the lack of knowledge about the benefits of these systems and, and about how it is in, it, they should be implemented. But I think it's, it's good to have some uh, background, some, some history of, 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 of URAF. Well, uh, I think the seed of URAF was the SAFE project. Uh, most of, uh, of partners of the SAFE project met in Paris together with other partners and other colleagues working in agroforestry in 2010 and decided to create URAF that was officially uh, created in 2012. Well, the main objective was make lobby for trees because as Christian says, usually trees are, are, are mute. We had no funds at that, that time. Our objective was to improve the CAP to, to, to 20, 20, uh, 2014 to the 2020, but we have some help and I think it deserves to be said. At Benito region with Justino and Francesca, which is just close to me, 
uh, were really very helpful, and also the French Agroforestry Association, like uh, well, uh, Alan Canet was, was also very helpful uh, with that. This office is the main office of the, direct, the Directorate uh, General, Director General of uh, DG Agri, uh, Mr. Silva. We also went to the Parliament because in Europe you have to work in the Commission and also in the Parliament to organize a successful meeting with Gaston, uh, the member of the par Parliament, uh, Gaston Franco, uh, Trees for a Sustainable uh, European Agriculture. That was a really very great success. And in the meantime, between 2012 to now, we have been increased and growing up. Uh, increasing the number of countries that are highlighted there in, 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 in blue. Still, there are some work to do, but we are growing up, which is important. Well, which were the results of our work in, in Brussels? Well, just very, very summarized because we will have a session of policy and we will talk about the, this in, uh, in a more specific way. But uh, for the CAP 2007-2013, we have the measure 222 that has two main problems, that it, it doesn't allow farmers to get some payments for maintenance of the agroforestry system once it was established, and makes it, no, if, 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 the, if the plot was established, it made it not eligible for the, um, for the CAP one. Within the CAP 2014-2020, I split it in agroforestry in the, in, the, in the pillar one and in the, in the pillar two. Well, agroforestry was, I mean, the, the number of 15 trees per hectare was increased to uh, 100 trees per hectare, but there are some problems because they are considered mature trees, so young uh, agroforestry systems are really not considered. We were able to include as one of the options of the ecological focus areas uh, agroforestry, which is part of, uh, of the greening of arable lands, uh, together with the help of another NGOs across Europe, we were, were also able to, uh, to convince uh, the Commission that the good vegetation has to, a, place to, uh, a role to place within the permanent grasslands. Regarding the agroforestry in the second pillar, well, uh, the measure 8.2 is a continuation of the measure 2.2, but now we have maintenance, so the farming once established the, the agroforestry systems is able to get funds for maintenance, maintenance the, 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 the system for a, a period of, of five years. But the problem of eligibility and, the, and the, the, the lack of coherence between pillar one and pillar two is still there. And well, uh, it continues the, the rule that silvo pasture is a tool to overcome uh, forestry, forest risk, like for example, forest, uh, fa, uh, forest fires. But to get the main objectives that you can see there about, uh, uh, of URAF, which, which are our tools, what we have, what, what, which are our medias, which are, which are our, our results? Well, uh, URAF is working nowadays in two very big um, forums, uh, and very important, trying to spread and convince uh, Europe that agroforestry is really uh, a, a very sustainable way of managing our land. One is the European Commission, and another one is the European Parliament. Well, we were very lucky. We applied together with many NGOs uh, when the call was open to take part of the civil dialogue groups. The civil dialogue groups are groups of dialogue where the commission uh, dialogue, makes dialogue with different N NGOs. Of, out of all of them, we were able to have of having two positions in the civil dialogue groups of arable, organic farming, CAP, forestry and cork, environment and climate change, direct payments and greening, and rural development. In yellow, I put the, the people that went uh, representing Europe to, to in, in these civil dialogue groups. Well, this is a photo of, of how, how it is handled. And what it's doing there is uh, what the Commission usually explains uh, how the, the policy, the CAP, is developed and also shows some uh, new drafts about policy of different regulations and, 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 and so. So we are able to interact directly with the Commission within this forum, which is for us, it's, it is really a pleasure and, 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 and really very important. 
We meet quite frequently, around twice a year, with the steps of arable crops. We, we met only, uh, well, we met, sorry, uh, every, uh, every month. Well, but because we belong this, to these civil dialogue groups, we are part also of the, uh, another very big forum that is the European Network for Rural Devel Development that is dealing exclusively with all aspects related with do rural development. Well, it has representation all over Europe. This is the, 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 the web page again. What is shown there is uh, the policy implementation. How we have obtained updates of it and uh, also of policy uh, development, how it, how it is going on, okay? Well, I show you what is the composition uh, of this European Network of Rural Development because then you, I think you will get the feedback of who is talking there. Well, we have managing authorities that are implementing agroforestry, uh, sorry, uh, implementing the CAP, the paying agencies, 25 NGOs, one of which is URAF, uh, local authorities organizations, leader local action groups, which are very important for implementing uh, any kind of practices at a local level, 28 advisory services and 28 agricultural research institutes. But I think the most important are the ones that are implementing and has the power to move uh, agroforestry within the different, uh, nation, the different um, rural development, regional rural, rural developments that are across Europe, that are 118, okay? And these are the, uh, the national rural networks that represent every ministry uh, there. So everything that is said there is, is able to reach uh, people that is able to handle agroforestry in a, very, uh, in a better way. This group has a steering group. Uh, URAF is also part of the steering group. This group, the previous group meets just once a year. This group meets two times a year. But this general, uh, the, the, besides the General Assembly and the State Committee, the European Network for Rural Development has working groups, which are groups smaller. There are 20 people, um, more and less. Uh, the first one is dealing with leader, with the leader projects that we are trying to see where agroforestry is implemented and just to show to the rest that this, it was an important tool. In this new, new CAP, we have the innovation subgroup that for me is the most important if we want to spread knowledge all over Europe or across Europe, which is handled by the EIP Agri. We have some representatives here and we are very thankful for, for, for that. And there is also the subgroup of evaluation, which is mostly related with the national uh, rural networks. We are not part of, of it, but any NGO is, is part of it. From the innovation, there are two uh, instruments that are essential to, to increase the knowledge about agroforestry. One is the focus group, and another one are the operational groups that are groups uh, that, that integrate, uh, taking into account using a multi-actor uh, approach, people with different backgrounds for speaking about a specific theme. Okay, but they are researchers, they are policymakers, they are administrators, but Another thing very important, they are farmers. So we discuss all together and make beautiful papers that can be seen in the uh, web page of the EIP Agri. Well, as I said, the General Assembly meets twice, uh, the, the steering committee twice, four times the rest of the subgroups. But there is a branch of, I think that the last year, we were present in more than 20 meetings of the EIP uh, Agri related with seminars and, and, and workshops as we will see later on. I also have to say that uh, URAF has members involved in different national rural networks. We are pushing that. And they are the members of Italy, Spain, Belgium, Poland, and, and Greece, which is very important because they are at home. Well, regarding focus group, I can say that URAF was able to have uh, representatives in three of them that were already, uh, that uh, already had taken place. Profitability of permanent grassland, ecological focus area, and mixed farming. Uh, they, they, this means that the ideas of agroforestry are in the final papers that they deliver. So if people read it and it's convinced, they are able to implement and to use it. And in these focus groups, there, is, there are also a list of good practices where agroforestry are uh, presented. I have to say that there was a huge call with more than 120 
192 proposals to become, uh, for the specific themes, to become a focus uh, group. In the final meeting, there were two winners, mixed farming plus uh, agroforestry, one, one of the of the winners were a, a mix, uh, focus group that integrates mixed farming and agroforestry, but the commission decided to split it, split them. So we have a new focus group on uh, agroforestry. It will be hosted next uh, November uh, 2016. It was a success of Europe, but we don't have to forget that there there is many people from different parts and uh, people from the ministries of Poland France, Finland, Sweden, and uh, Portugal, and also Spain, where they are pushing this, uh, this, uh, this idea. As I already said, they, they are integrated by research, farmers, NGOs, advisors, etc. They, uh, at the end, establish the state of art of every, every theme, the research needs that goes directly to the Horizon 2020, well, together with another things, of course. They, they describe best practices to disseminate at the European level, which is the important thing, well, for farmers, and they also propose operational groups that has to be taken in each uh, uh, member, um, regional or country development program. So I think that this is quite uh, important. But Europe, also thanks to be part of the of the system of the European Copy Commission, was able to 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 organize some events, like for example the event in the in the pavilion of the European Commission in the Expo uh, Milano that was, uh, well, it was hosted during the DG Agri Stakeholder Week. They, they gave us for free the, the, the building and we did uh, a meeting, uh, just called uh, a conference, it's called Agroforestry Sustainability, Feeding the Planet and Providing uh, Energy. That was very excellently organized by Andrea Pisanelli and Adolfo uh, Rosati. In that meeting, there were people from different, uh, it was split into uh, parts. The first one was more general one, and speakers from the FAO, from the PEFC, just speaking about the possibility of certificate the products delivered for, for agroforestry, which is important, just to, 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 to disseminate this type of, of systems, of course, a group, et cetera, and the European Commission with Thomas Strelak was were there. In the afternoon, the, the floor was given to the farmers because we think that the involvement of the farmers within Europe is really important in order to spread the, the, the implementation of agroforestry because they are, we are really, they are the, fi they are really the, fi the final users. But there are more events. I said that there are more than 20 seminars and, and uh, workshops, etc. But I, I like, I like it to, to highlight this one because uh, it, has some, uh, it was a meeting organized by the EIP Agri Seminar of Knowledge uh, Systems and they integrate many, many, all of them are farmers. And they, well, they try to see how, the, the, how we can extend good practices across uh, Europe. And the title was Promoting Creativity and Learning Through Agricultural Knowledge Systems and Interactive Innovation. It was hosted in, in Dublin last, uh, last year. And uh, we have three uh, representatives of Europe. Some of them were as farmers which were Adolfo Rosati, Fabian Balaguer, and Robert Borek from uh, Italy, France, and, and Poland. Well, usually these meetings are very participative. They, 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 I like them anyway, because you speak with everybody at the same time and get some background. We learn a lot each other once from, from others. We have an initial big meeting, we discuss, we make some notes, we order the notes, we speak about them, and finally there are some conclusions that finally are put in the... In the um, in the web page of the, of the commission. So if Europe or representative of Europe are there, the ideas come through, of agroforestry comes through. Well, this is our job, what we do, what Europe tries to do uh, as best as, as, as Europe can in the European Commission, but we also work with the European Parliament. I told you that in the European Commission, in the different civil dialogue groups, they tell us, uh, about the drafts of the regulations, about the draft of the di different di uh, directives, so we are able to make proposals to change them. For example, the ones uh, of, about the European forest strategy, it, it was not mentioned at all, the agroforestry were there, and then we, we got three times mentioning 
uh, uh, agroforestry in this document, which is a two-page document, which is quite good. And we are now working with implementation of the LULU CFEU uh, uh, rules. This part is led by uh, Jerry Lawson. Well, we have to say that we have very good collaborations with different parliamentary members, like, for example, Paul Brahman, Paul Binskowski, Gan Bruce, uh, Mr. Frederick Lopez Palau, and always the help of uh, another um, branch that Jura has, that is Alienor, with Melanie Lamason. In the Parliament, and thanks to uh, a European project that we have that was led by Charles Burriel and with a representative that was Sylvie uh, Guillem, we also made a session in the European Parliament that was quite su uh, successful, trying to deliver a good way to increase education about agroforestry for farmers across, across Europe. There are, there are, yeah, I'm almost done. <laughs> there are uh, uh, also, um, we have some uh, visits of some of these parliamentary members, like for example, Paul Brahman, that went to visit uh, some uh, extraordinary farms that are linked to AFAF, and they were invited by Alan Canet, Fabian Balaguer, and Jerry Lawson. And when he ends the, the, the visit to this, uh, to this place, he says something like, today's visit demonstrates that agroforest is an answer to the various challenges that the European agricultural sector is currently facing profitability, competitiveness, biodiversity, climate change, and territorial planning. And this is very important that a member of the parliament says that, okay, just to, to, to convince about policy. UREF is also working as part of, as a partner of different projects, like for example, that forward project, which is a very huge project. Most, most of you already uh, know them. I think one of the important things that we have to, to do in, uh, within that project was the definition of, uh, of agroforestry practices, and if it is implemented, where, is, where they are, which, what, what is the background in, a super, super, in, the, in the area of, of agroforestry. We decide, decided to include these as uh, practices, silver pastures, silver owls, kitchen gardens when they have fruit trees, forest farming, or riparian um, buffer, buffer strips. That was uh, leaded by uh, Michael uh, van der Weer from, uh, from Finland. And we made maps, for example, for silver pastor, we were able to make a map. This is, those are big numbers because there are not the specific numbers for every, every place. We know now that approximately, approximately we, uh, silver pastor is implemented in almost 20 million hectares, but it's only the 10% of the potential area they have. And we can see in red where, where, where silver pastor is not present, which is a good thing because we know where we have to work more. So there is a huge potential for that. Also silver arable. Well, the number of hectares allocated to silver arable are much lower, almost half a million hectares which represents 0.4 EU arable land. And again, the central countries has less, uh, less, uh, less implementation of this uh, area. So we have also a very huge potential. But we don't have to forget that Turaf is a European consortium, or European association, but we have a lot of branches across the different countries. And there is an important national networking that is working at farm level and also at, uh, at, at research level. Well, I highlight this one, but there are many, like the Festival of Marciac. I went there several times and I really enjoyed them because it's a week with uh, very beautiful music. It's, uh, it's linked to the Marcia Festival of, of Jazz. And they have talks every day for general public explaining, for the society in general, that has to be aware of that, who is, um, what is agroforestry about? They have also sessions discussing innovation with researchers, technicians, extension service. That is a, a whole week allocated to that. But I have more examples, as I said, like, for example, the one of Flanders in, in, in Belgium. Also different agroforestry meetings in Greece, Sweden, Bulgaria, Poland. But for us, it's also very important, as I said, the certification of the agroforestry products as a way to convince people that it has some benefits, economical benefits. So in the Marciac Festival, we can see some uh, products that are labeled by, uh, with an agroforestry shoe, uh, label, sorry, and also the cookies from a corn that produced it in, in Greece and that Anastasia just gave us. But again, the, the, the important person is the farmer that uses trees to graze, uh, to graze the, the, the farms. 
We are aware of what is going on in France also. We have to, to congratulate, and we did so, uh, France, because we are the first country in Europe that were able to uh, develop a plan uh, from 2015 to, to, to 2020. So uh, this is a very good example that we have to take home and convince our policymakers. Well, agroforestry is an excellent tool to increase the use of resources of below and um, above ground levels, as I say. Is this an extensi a tool extensively used in Europe? No. Is that common? I mean, is the rest of the temperate countries doesn't use uh, agroforestry at all? Well, they don't. And for this reason, they, they just do some strategies just to move forward, like the one that is, has been done in, uh, in France, but in India, and also in, uh, in, the, in the USA. And there is a specific book uh, uh, of the FAO is speaking about how agroforestry shall be moved in the, in the policy agenda. So we need an agroforestry strategy that at least has to to, 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 to two minutes. Policy promotion, education, innovation, and, and research. Also, it's good that uh, Christian says before, link uh, Europe to differ with different uh, agroforestry associations, like for example, uh, AFTA. And just two slides to show that if you want more information, we have a beautiful web page, I think. And yes, it is. It, is organized, it has been created by Joao Palma and Sergio Correa. And nowadays it's handled by Joao Palma and Nuria Ferreiro Dominguez. And we have also a newsletter where uh, you can see every two months all the work that you have to do in, that's in, in Brussels and in different places where policy is, uh, is, uh, is involved. And another specific uh, section that is allocated exclusively for farmers, just to disseminate best practices, among other news that you can just share. So let's develop a growth strategy. Thank you very much.